Let us pray. Blessed are you, God our Father, that you have chosen us in Christ to be your sons and daughters, set free by the blood of your Son. Keep us free and make us live a life that reflects the good news brought to us by Jesus. Make our spirit of love and service contagious, that it may inspire people and attract them to you, our living and loving God. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning is from the book of Mark, where Jesus summons his twelve and he sends them out into the world to, tell, to spread the good news. And he gives them specific instructions as to what they're supposed to take with them. We read in Mark 6, Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick. No food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet and testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is our gospel reading. Boy, this anywhere fits right in with that. Yes, it does. Go anywhere. Preach everywhere. May the people listen. Maybe it's they such won't. Fear I cannot know, but boy, I'd be scared to death going around to people's houses without anything. Would yeah. You? Well, you got your walking stick. You can always Just club them. Yeah. <laughs> you got. Yeah, you can club them with the walking stick. They didn't listen. It was a different time. You know, you, you often wonder, you see hitchhikers along the road, and you, you know, we're kind of taught to be fearful of them and don't pick them up. But you always wonder if that's uh, an image of Jesus walking along the road and testing us to see if we would be willing to help somebody who is in need. You know, you hear tragic stories of people picking up hitchhikers and then... Uh, uh, getting shot to robbed or whatever the case might be, but the whole world is not bad. It's kind of like listening to Donald Trump right now as he's uh, uh, on this immigration kick and how you know he's kind of got the whole thing wrapped up into a fear factor, so to speak. But not everybody is bad that comes in from Mexico. A lot of them are coming up looking for jobs. And there's some, like I believe, even in the Andover area that are working over there. Um, you know, there's just people who are in need. And so they come to the United States. We are a country of openness. Just as Christianity should be a, a religion of openness. Being open to everybody. Not just those who belong to a particular synod, not just to those who may have your own beliefs. Openness means being open to Jesus Christ and open to everybody. And these 12 disciples are going out there into the world unknown. Where are they going? How are people going to welcome them? And when they do welcome them, you know, they welcome them openly or closely. In the opera of Faust, there is a fight to the finish between Satan and the young man, Valentine. During the course of the fight, Satan breaks Valentine's sword and he stands poised to slay him. But the young boy takes the two pieces of his sword and fashions them into a cross. Confronted with the symbol of faith, Satan becomes immobilized and Valentine is saved. It's an interesting concept. A dramatic demonstration of faith. It may not happen all the way, all that, you know, that time. It may not happen always like that. But you do need to have a certain amount of strong faith inside of you to believe. 
Faith is really more than just believing in God. Faith is about having faith in yourself and believing in yourself and allowing to do things. You have many of these books that are written out there by people. Uh, one of them is like, Think and Grow Rich. You know, basically you have to think yourself into doing it, and you, but you have to believe it. You simply just can't think God. You can't simply think about doing good. You have to do good. You have to believe it with your whole heart, your whole soul, and with your whole mind. Not just simply giving lip service. Many people go to, to churches and, and they may get a little bit of a message out of it and then they go home and they don't think about church to, oh, we got to go to church today, it's Sunday again. <laughs> For many people, church is one day a week. That's all they think about. And that's not what God wants of us. He wants us to give glory to Him every day. Not just lip service. You look at uh, King Herod. He was uh, an interesting man. You know, he really had a liking of John the Baptist. He really liked John. You know, and John was one, and he didn't mince words, and he went up to John and says, hey, you are sinning, you are not supposed to be messing around. And Herod, you know, he was kind of in a, in a predicament, and he put John in prison, but he didn't kill him. He liked John, so they had a, a party. And then a request was made to him. He says, I'll give you know, the dancers, I'll give you anything you want. She runs out, asks her mother, What should I ask for? John the Baptist's head. So she goes in and asks him. And he was kind of grieved, and he here he's stuck now between two worlds. Here it is. He has given an oath to his that he would give her anything that she wants and he's got the love for John the Baptist. Which is it going to go? Which way are we going to go on this deal? You know, a, a, a prophecy, a, a disciple of God or an oath to a human being? That's where society comes into problem with some of our faith that we have because society starts tearing us and starts making us way which way do I want to go do I want to you know yeah I believe in Jesus but over here you get all these other people dragging me in this side where is the balance going to be and what side are we going to go you know, you even look at, you know, we make promises, and sometimes the promises we make in haste can be damning at the end. Look at George W. Bush, his big campaign promise. Anybody remember that? Read my lips, no new taxes. Remember that phrase, that promise that he made? It got him elected, didn't it? But it did not get him reelected came back to haunt him. Promises and decisions made in haste. They will bring down empires and topple kings and destroy businesses and ruin marriages and cripple lives and ruin political ambitions, so to speak. Herod heard about Jesus. And he says, John, the man I beheaded has been raised from the dead because now Herod heard about Jesus. He said, oh no, John is back. And he knew he had done wrong. It's a predicament, though, we all face. Herod is not unique. We are all sometimes in a situation where we're forced with a society versus Christianity decision that we need to make. Peer pressure, don't, is that what they call that nowadays? Oh, it's okay. Everybody's doing it. Does it make it right? We are under constant pressure here in society of following society and not God. 
It's easier to load the boat up on a Sunday morning and going out fishing than try to get dressed up and, and come to church. It's easier to stay in bed on Sunday mornings. Oh, it's my only day I can stay home and sleep. It's easier to do that than it is to get up and go to church. Pressure the society just keeps us begging to, to say, no, follow my way. You know, the devil's at work out here. We just don't see it, but he really is. And he's pulling strongly at many people. Lloyd J. Oglive, in his book, Life Without Limits, tells the story of a pastor who in the space of one week, one week, he heard these comments from people. This is just in one week. A woman said, I'm under tremendous pressure from my son these days. I can't seem to satisfy him, however hard I work. He really puts me under pressure. A young man says, My parents have fantastic goals for me to take over the family business. It's not what I want to do, but their pressure is unbearable. Now, sometimes we have to look out, what are we putting pressure on other people, on our own family members? You know, do we pressure, say, oh, you should take over the business. That's what, you know... People do. Well, people don't necessarily do that anymore. The family business is not just a family business, it's an individual business that's probably going to go out of business when you die. You see businesses and come and go. We expect our children to take over them, and it's not always going to happen. Pressure. So we try to pressure them into doing it. That's not where their heart is. A college woman said, I'm being pressured by my boyfriend to live with him before we get married. You know, sort of try it out to see if we're right for each other. A husband said, my wife is never satisfied. Whatever I do, however much I make, it's never enough. Life with her is like living in a pressure cooker with the lid fastened down and the heat on high. A secretary said, pointing to her phone, that little black thing is driving me silly. At the other end of the line are people who make impossible demands and think they are the only people alive. Why well, isn't that the truth sometimes? The person at the other end is always right. A middle-aged wife said, my husband thinks my faith is silly. When I feel his resistance to Christ, I wonder if I'm wrong and confused. As a result, I've developed two lives. One with him and one with my Christian friends. Well, think about that one for a second. I wonder if that's how many people are living their lives. A double standard. Double faith. One with society and one with God. Hmm. I wonder if that's what Jesus would want. Does he want us to split us, you know, to, to split our love? Oh, 50% here, 50% here. I don't know if that's what Jesus really wants. If we're going to follow, we really need to follow. Otherwise, we're doing it half-heartedly. We can't live both worlds. We're going to love the one and hate the other. Jesus said that. Put your love in Jesus Christ. An elderly woman said, My sister thinks she has all the answers about the faith and tries to convince me on her point of view. I feel pressure to become her brand of Christian, but I keep thinking it means being like her. I don't want it at all. When she calls, I just put the phone on my shoulder and let her rant on while I do other things. <laughs> A half hour later, she's still on the phone, gabbing away. But I still feel the pressure. 
Being pressured into Christianity is not what Jesus also wants us to do. He wants us to follow him freely. Freely. No pressure. You know, when you have life with Jesus, there is no pressure. Because when you have God on your side, who do you need to worry about? God is everywhere. God is great. God is where we want to go. I'm not here. We're not here to follow another person. We shouldn't be like sheep. You know, if one sheep leads, the other will follow them. We should not be like sheep. We should be following God. A young pastor at a clergy conference said, I hardly know who I am anymore. There are so many points of view in my congregation. I can't please them all. Everyone wants to capture me for his camp and get me to shape his church to his convictions. The pressure makes me want to leave the ministry. And there are pastors out there who are in that predicament. People in the church. Oh, you shouldn't talk about this in church. Or, no, that's not right. You know, you know, We need to really go in this direction. Oh, we got to put red carpet down over here. We can't have this blue stuff. You get conflicts all over the place. You get people just up in arms over simple little things. I always say that... It, you want politics, forget Congress, go to church. <laughs> That's about the truth of it. Uh, for here in Pierpont, South Dakota, we've had our share of politics. And look where it's gotten us. We're hanging on, but it's not like it used to be. For many churches, it's the same thing. How many churches have closed over the years because of politics? It happens. All these people have one thing in common, they wrote. They are being pressured by other people. So how do we escape that? How do we escape the pressure? How do, how do we get away from all these people? Well, one thing, we can't live in a, can't be a hermit and live in a building someplace and never come out. We have to be around people. So how do you not feel the pressure? How do you set yourself free? That's what it comes down to. Setting yourself free. Herod, he couldn't set himself free. He was playing the balancing act, trying to please both sides. He loved John, but he got this oath that he had to to, to keep. All these people. Pressure. Pressure to follow their way. I've had you know people ask, Oh, what denomination are you? I'm thinking, well, I'm Christian. No, but no, what religion are you? I preach what comes out of the Bible. No, no, what, you know, denomination, you know, Lutheran, Catholic, what are you? I says, well, we're a member of the LCMC congregation, but we're basically non-denominational. Oh, so you're Lutheran. So we're Christian. People want to put a name tag on people, creating more pressure. We welcome everybody, as long as you believe. When you take communion, it is a time to, for belief in Jesus Christ. It is between you and God, not between you and me. I simply am the distribution mechanism. I distribute the communion to you so that you can have the forgiveness of sins through Jesus Christ. It's time to be set free. It's time. Jesus says the truth will set you free. And that's what we want. We want that freedom. Why have the pressure in your lives? If you have pressure, you're in a pressure cooker. 
And the thing is, when you're in a pressure cooker, it just keeps building and building and building and building. And then what happens? Pop! <laughs> I don't know. I've never built it up that high before, but I imagine it probably will. They do have a safety valve on there. We don't have a, a safety valve in our lives. We will have a tendency to pop and go off the deep end. Pressure is, is something that is always going to be around us. It's how we cope with it and how we deal with it. And that's what we have to ask Jesus to help us along the journey. Read the scriptures. He tells us about being free. You know, through Jesus Christ, he says, put your, put your yoke upon him. Let, let him carry the, the burden of life. He's already done that for us. Why do we have to reinvent the wheel? Why do we have to do it again? Be free. And you're going to feel much better. Be free. And you're going to just love life again. Maybe you love life now. If you do, that's great and wonderful. If you're struggling in life, then you got to look at what the pressure points are and eliminate them. Turn the heat down. Or off whichever might be the case, and follow Jesus. It's that simple. And you're thinking, oh, yeah, if only life was that simple. It isn't. If you live in a community, more than chances are, there's always going to be people who want to create conflict, who want to add pressure, who want to say, no, we shouldn't be doing it this way. You guys are crazy for doing it that way. We don't want to be judgmental. We don't want to be like one guy in the political stage right now. Oh, those politicians are all stupid. They're not all stupid. Maybe they're feeling the pressure. Maybe they too themselves have to realize, okay, what are we going to do? Who are we going to follow? Let's not have pressure get in the way of our happiness. Let's not allow pressure to, to pull us and, and put us on a weight and say, okay, Jesus or this, Jesus or this, Jesus or this, which way do I want to go? <laughs> the pressure is so there, I can't take it anymore. God help us. Release it. I think there's uh, like programs like um, is it yoga or something like that where you, you sit down and you just breathe and you allow things just to, to escape out of you and you're, you're just really at peace. Probably none of us can do yoga. <laughs> <coughs> but we can do the next best thing and just maybe grab a lawn chair and just sit outside and just Breathe in and relax. Look at the wonders. Watch the squirrel steal my walnuts off my tree. <laughs> Adding more pressure in my life. <laughs> Seen that the other day. It was a squirrel. Took one of my nuts off my tree. Not even ripe yet. It's like, how dare you? This is kind of fun watching them, though. Watching the squirrels. Watching the birds. Watching... Watching life. It's a time to relax. So when you feel the pressure, grab a chair and just sit down and breathe and relax. And take it all in. Even in the hot outdoors you can do that. Sit in the shade. <laughs> no? Okay, well, go in the living room. Put a fan in front of yourself then and uh, do, <laughs> do that. But release the pressure. Don't allow other people to control you. Allow Jesus Christ to control you. Allow him to steer the car. That's where you need to put your faith. No more pressure. The truth has set you free. Amen.